All right, welcome back. We're gonna look at how to write a formula from a name. So we're taking a, a written out name using words and turning it into a symbolic meaning of a substance, the shorthand of elements and their ratios inside of a compound's uh, formula. So we're gonna break this into ionic, covalent, and acid set of rules. Uh, really, we are just undoing going from a name to a formula, formula to name back and forth. You need to be able to identify what kind of formula you're looking at. So the first one, ionic, you won't have a prefix or the word acid in the name of this substance. Now, I have a asterisk ne next to prefix because there are a couple here. Of course, you're gonna see per and hypo if you happen to have uh, um, oxy anions potentially. And then also dichromate would be where you actually see a number prefix. And di would be important because we do use the prefix di in covalent names. So you won't see a prefix or acids mostly. And then uh, it's really simple. You're going to take the name and you're going to write the ion symbol and its charge above the name. And then you need to check your charges because ionic compounds need to sum to zero. Their positive and negative charges need to equal zero. So crisscross your formulas if needed. Uh, the cri the crisscrossing uh, charge on the ion becomes the subscript inside the formula. And if you need to, you're gonna reduce. So if both of your subscripts happen to be twos, you would just drop them, or if one was a two and the other were a four, you would reduce the two down to a one and the four down to a two, if that's needed. Not all the time, sometimes we need to do that. And I have some ionic specific formula examples right here. Here's a flow chart that's a little bit more graphical. So you're not gonna see the word acid and there shouldn't be a prefix inside the name. If the name happens to be uh, starting with ammonium, make sure you use the NH4. Otherwise, it's going to be a metal ion symbol with a charge. And then uh, find the symbol of the anion as well. Make sure to check your charges that the pluses equal the minuses, crisscross if you need to, and reduce. Next comes covalent. This time you should see at least one prefix. And again, be on the lookout for dichromate. Dichromate won't count. You might have two prefixes if both of the atoms have subscripts on them or, or will need subscripts. So write the subscript and the symbol above the name of uh, the substance that you happen to see in front of you. The subscript this time just goes on the back side of the symbol, so you're not going to do any crisscrossing here. That's the most common mistake I see students make. Use that prefix, write the number that that prefix represents, and put it on the back side of that symbol. Here's a flowchart of how that would look graphically. We know that we're using the covalent naming system because we don't see the word acid and we don't see a pre and we do see a prefix. Excuse me. The first name um, might have a subscript attached to it if uh, the if there happens to be a prefix. Sometimes we don't have a prefix on the first name, and even if uh, we don't have a prefix, the subscript which would be one, you, you're going to omit that inside your actual formula. All other prefixes will require a subscript on the first atom. The second atom is always going to have a prefix. Um, if that prefix happens to be the number one for mono, you're again going to omit that from the actual formula. Finally, acids. You're going to know this is the dead giveaway. You'll see the word acid inside the formula name. If you see the word acid, put a hydrogen above that. Now that's going to end up becoming the front of the formula. Then determine your anion. So whatever your ending of your current name is, you're gonna switch that to your anion uh, suffix here. So if you happen to see hydro something ick, you're gonna cross off the hydro, cross off the ick and replace it with IDE. So like hydrochloric would just turn to chloride, which is the Cl minus one ion. Or if you happen to have uh, sulfate, or sulfuric, excuse me, you cross off the ick and replace it with eight, so it becomes sulfate. Or if you happen to have nitrous acid, or you would, this is a typo, you would take the OUS and replace it with ITE. Don't forget to check your charges on acids as well. Acids need to sum to zero, so make sure that your pluses and minuses cross. For acids, you would only ever have a subscript on the hydrogen because the plus one would go on the back side of your anion, and since it's a one, you'll never have to write that, so you may have a subscript on the hydrogen if your anion happens to be a minus two or a minus three. Don't forget to check your charges. Here's a flow chart of how this would look graphically. We know we have an acid because it contains the word acid. 
then you're going to want to um, take what you have and cross off the hydro and the ick or cross off the us and replace it with it, cross off the ick, replace it with a, and just replace the endings of whatever those anions happen to be. And then find that symbol that represents that name. Don't forget to crisscross because acids need to also have an overall charge of zero. Again, example problems for each of these different types of naming systems. After watching this video, you should know how to take a name, so the words written out, and turn that into a symbolic representation of what's going on inside that compound. Different sets of rules for ionic, covalent, and acids, and uh, you should be able to identify which set of naming rules you'd be using based on how the names are written. I hope that helps.